Los Angeles and New York, and we're currently in the middle of closing distribution deals for 14 films that we've already had in the past three or four years. So really the belief of the art of Elysium is to believe in the power of art and the power of creation. And my greatest belief on earth is that whatever God we choose to believe in, it starts from a point of creation. And however you look at that point of creation, in our society, artists are the ones who grab that and pull that into the world and give us things that we've never imagined before from songs to writing to performances to jewelry to fashion to creation and that really is why i think it's always so hard for people to understand the art of elysium because it's infinite and it really relies on the power of artists and with that belief certain people come into my life over the years and ethan and brie being one of the most important people in his family by far the most creative family I know, um, and I was trying to I'm the least creative, by the way. <laughs> I'm a poor representation of the rest of my incredibly gifted family. And they would all say the same thing. You know, they're equally as humble, and Cassia, your mom, who just has raised you guys to just believe you can create anything. And I was trying to think. I can't remember. I know where I met your mom, but I believe I met you through Jeremy's sister, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was Jeremy who brought you in the hospital the first time. And then I read it at Peter years ago in New York, and I met Peter through you, and it just kind of expands, and it became kind of this community of artists that is so special and so dear. And tonight, Eric, Joel, like you guys have all like come and been part of this organization, and this is such an honor to have you guys here. And this movie, and the filmmakers behind it, like you see you guys sitting here and what's become with you guys and your careers and have grown from that. And I think that that is the power of creating a film. And Ethan, I love you dearly. You're about to moderate this. And thank you for putting this together. And thank you for being a constant inspiration to me and truly being one of the most gifted actors and creators I know. Um, Ethan and Marie. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to all you guys. Thank you guys for all coming out. Look at this, it's crazy. <laughs> it's cool. Um, yeah, I met the Art of Museum 10 years ago and have been working and volunteering with the charity. They've been really supportive with my brothers through, through his art and when his daughter was diagnosed with leukemia, the support they gave him was instrumental in getting them through that. And not only the charity itself, but the people involved in the work too. Um, so thanks for having us. Thank you guys all for coming. Thank you, Samsung, for bringing us here. Um, now, I've probably seen the movie least than anybody here, so I'm like the worst moderator. You know, I think Joel probably knows. Yeah, it was Joel. About this film. I think Joel should moderate. But I was wondering, like, the main all the moderation, but. Uh, how much weight couldn't we hardly? Is the only question I can come up with. What are you waiting for, Ethan? I don't know. We should save that question for last. And then I'll say nothing, play it. I, I was always confused. I was always confused because I thought, isn't this supposed to be I can hardly wait? Well, originally the movie was called The Party. It was originally called The Party, but, but isn't the proper way to say something is like, I can hardly wait for that to happen. Then you can't say anyway. I cannot hardly wait. It's a double negative. It's a double negative? Yeah. I don't know. And we just got out of high school, so okay. we should probably learn to talk about <laughs> I'm Am I wrong? I don't know. I mean, is it can hardly wait or cannot hardly wait? You're right. You're right. Am I right or wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Was this question raised back then? Yeah, we all gave up a big stink when they came to us and they said the movie's no longer the party. And we're like, well, what, what's the name of the movie we're making? And they said, it's Can't Hardly Wait. We're like, really? What? It doesn't well, sound because right. there was a great movie uh, called The Party yes, that Peter Sellers, Sellers did. If you haven't seen it, you guys should watch that. <laughs> Peter Sellers is fantastic. I guess, but, should we all introduce ourselves? Is that yeah, sure. Enough? That's that fair enough. Uh, let's go down the here. Ah, well, you don't need any introduction <laughs> because it's just a uh, um, I played the boob 
stripper dressed as a man. <laughs> 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 and gave really fucking good advice. <laughs> My name is Jay Paulson, and I was X-File guy number two. <laughs> hey, I'm Steve Monroe, and uh, I'll be the band, dudes. <laughs> I'm Joel Michaeli, and I'm X-Files guy number one, with uh, the afro and the retainer on up, joyousness. <laughs> I'm Peter Fajali, I played Mike Dexter. It's so clean. Uh, I'm Eric Balfour, I played the, the pot brownie guy. The, the I mean, not many people had names in this movie. No. Pot brownie guy, X-Files guy. The explanation of who I was was longer than I think I was actually in the movie. <laughs> and only you guys, we all worked. We all were on set every single day. For what, two, two and a half months yeah. that we shot it? I think generally. I, I only got paid for one day. One day. Yeah, like Almani or some shit. It's like yeah. the Inland Empire. For one night with you. I was really I was, I was that jealous of you guys. <laughs> you guys actually got to go off set, so I was oh, jealous because yeah. we shot everything yeah. on set. Right. Yeah. I actually shot one scene off set. Yeah, the one at the diner. Yeah. Well, the actual physical house is in Altadena, by Pasadena, and then they actually rebuilt that entire house on a soundstage in Santa Clarita Studios, so that they were able to destroy it and have a hundred kids running around and graffitiing it and, you know, just ripping it to bits, so you didn't have to buy a full house. You guys still need to introduce yourselves. Yeah, uh, keep going. Uh, um, my name is Sean. Try this one. Try this one. Thank you. My name is Sean Patrick Thomas. I'm jock number one, two, or three, or four. I mean. <laughs> what is jock? You are always number one to me. Right. Thank you. Um, the beginning of my career was a random black guy in a white <laughs> teen movies. <laughs> I'm Jen Lyons, and it's girlfriend number three. But I had a name. It was Rachel. And my name is Ethan Embry, I'm Preston Mine. Um, do you guys, should we open up the floor and see if people have questions? Does anybody have Where's questions? Jennifer Love Hewitt? That's why I don't know. <laughs> she never comes to these things. I know. She didn't come to these things back then. No, no, she didn't. <laughs> No, yeah, she should, any minute now, she's going to come in, her hair is going to be blown. Fans already set, she's coming in. Her and Seth Green both. Well, I guess, do you guys, has anybody seen this movie? Oh. Raise your hands if you haven't seen the movie. Nice, Good. awesome. <laughs> the three of you are in for a really big treat. <laughs> Yeah, you're actually going to get to see the exclusive director's cut tonight no, that's never not. been seen before. So there was a director's cut, and it was screened only once for a test audience in Agoura Hills. And um, was there? I happened to sneak into it, shockingly, how did I get there, uh, with my best girlfriend. And, um, and we both got caught watching it and in deep, deep trouble. But in the director's cut version, there is... Um, a character, the crying drunk girl, which is Jennifer Elise Cox, uh, who played uh, uh, Jan Bra Brady in the Brady Bunch movies, and she's hilarious. It's basically what would have been an R film, right? It's the R yes, it's the R rated version. It basically was rated R because they showed kids that were drunk. So we had to eliminate all the kids that were drunk or seemed drunk, and they had to lie to the ratings board and pretend that the red cups that everyone is holding was carrying, you know, Coca Cola. Or, you know, and so they weren't actually drinking beer, and so they had to petition the board it to was, get a It was before 13. American Pie, so they didn't think that a rated R teen movie would do well. So they had to cut it down to a PG-13. So a lot of 
good stuff got cut out, but I, I think it's the whole thing. Yeah. Mainly like uh, mainly Jennifer Elise Cox and like Amber Benson from Buffy, who was on ecstasy, and um, a couple other drugged out characters. There was something in the refrigerator. Remember? No. You never hear in this version. You don't know what's in the refrigerator. Do we all remember what was in I don't remember. I totally remember. I don't know if it's appropriate to say. What was in the earmuffs? Please do. Hey, my kids over here, earmuffs. It was uh, an adult toy. Oh, okay. Like Xbox. Anyway, <laughs> for more fun. Or not. I had kids when I was actually filming this movie, when I was playing a teenager, which was uh, I was 22 or 23, and my, I had a six-month-old baby, and she scratched my cornea. So in one of the scenes, um, they had to half-light my face because I couldn't open my eye, and they didn't want to shut down production. So they, they just half-lit me, and they called it the Bruce Willis lighting. And uh, you'll probably see it in this one scene. But uh, like for three days, I couldn't open my eye because I had scratched cornea because my baby uh, scratched me. But I was I had a six-month-old, and I was playing a teenager. Hollywood. <laughs> no, my she's eighteen now. Oh, wow. look at that. Yeah. yeah. I think we all have kids now. Yeah. yeah. Not Joel. Some of us want kids still, so I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. I swear. <laughs> I think one of the actors got fired like one in the first couple of days because he was actually appropriately aged. He was 16, but next to all of us, he looked like he was 12. So, uh, so he just looked too young, and they, they were like, they got to age him up. And it was uh, Charlie Corsmo who actually ended up getting his part. But after they fired him, I think I think everybody just thought we were all getting fired. Like every, every time we get a word, it was like, who's getting fired next? So it was, it was kind of like, because we were all new, and we were like, I remember Lauren Ambrose was terrified, like every day, she was like, I think I'm getting fired, I think I'm getting fired, I think I'm getting fired. I was like, no, you're, I think you're doing great. How am I doing? <laughs> Lauren wouldn't talk to me. No? And Noelle, she was so weirded out about the idea that I had to lick this brownie off her face. Poor Lauren, yeah. and the things I've done to her throughout my career. <laughs> but yeah, she wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't communicate with me. She'd, no. she'd get really nervous. And, Sort of scary off. Well, Ethan and I had done like three movies together before the uh, Canada Day Wait, right? Yeah. yeah. So we knew each other really well. Uh, but then it was like, it was kind of cool because everybody it was like one big house and everybody was like for weeks just hanging out together. So yeah, it was fun because the people involved were fun. Yeah. But it was definitely work. Yeah. You know. Um, but it's I don't think anybody really thought it would blurred, be like 20 years blurred. later we'd be sitting around talking about no, it. No, never. No, when it came out, I think it came out at like 8th place for the weekend. It wasn't <laughs> successful. I remember seeing it Monday morning in the trades and going, oh, okay. There's that. And then to think that people still watch it now is great, you know. People come up and they say that it meant something to them when they were younger. And I always think it's a shame they don't know who John Hughes is, but, um, <laughs> but it, it's really kind of special that, it, you know, it turned into something. It's nice for um, them. Am I imagining this, or did you have a full black flying V guitar yes. in your trailer? Yes, I had a full yeah, stack, a full yeah. Marshall stack, in my, and I shared a that two big so trailer with Jennifer Love Hewitt, that might be why she's not here tonight. <laughs> but I had the full two-stack Marshall, and my bong was almost as big. The <laughs> 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 kids don't know what that is. No, it's a, it's a drum. Bongs? Yes, it's a medical device. <laughs> <device. laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable, Ethan. Move on. We have a question over there. Well, I know 
Ethan. They showed it at Peter and I earlier this summer. Saw yeah. it at uh, Sinestia, Sinestia at the cemetery. There was 8,000 people at that screening this summer going crazy over the film. So that was pretty fun. And then we also did USC this year. We did the Arclight. I did a Q&A in Toronto. Uh, I, I don't usually stay to watch it because I've seen it so many times throughout the years. Like, like it'll be on TV and I'll just catch it in pieces, you know? But, um, so I don't know when I've sat down and watched the full one. I actually, I think I watched it with, I think I watched it with my oldest daughter. I haven't watched it with you, but I think I sat down and watched it with my oldest daughter like, a couple of years ago because she had never seen it. So that was pretty cool. I was like, this, that's the scene where you scratch my cornea. <laughs> Any other questions? Should we should we start, start a big three right there? Uh oh. Ethan. Was I a prankster? You were a stone. I was just stoned all the time. I wasn't really <laughs> pranking anybody. <laughs> But no, I mean, it was really work. I mean, it, it took place during a party and it was it was a party environment and we were all young, but it was still, you know, we had a job to do. I don't think there were any pranks because we were terrified they replaced the main character. Yeah, once they replaced that one, day. Day. <laughs> and we had two directors. It's a movie that's a rare thing where it's directed by two people. So you had two parents. It's not like you could hide from one because the other one would be right around the corner. Um, Actually, I, I did when we did that scene outside. The uh, we did this one scene outside of, at the diner. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that I shot, and then I got called into the director's like office, and they were like, "We're gonna reshoot that scene. We didn't like it." So I thought I was getting fired. Next, I was like, "I'm getting fired." Okay, and then they were like. It's a it's a typical after fear to always yeah. worry that you're getting fired. And then and then like you're always like, getting fired. That's why we're crazy. Yeah. Like, so we're then just I was like, I don't know. Fired constantly. I don't know what you want me to do differently. And then they tried to explain it to me. And then I was like, but I'm. I thought I thought that that character should be instead of being like Karate Kid hated. I thought it should be a little hyper real, so he's more funny, so you can laugh at him. You know what I mean? And uh, and so that's the direction I was going. But then they came back like two days later, they were like, no, we cut it together, now we love it. So I was like completely confused, because I was like, first they hated it, then they loved it. So I just, most of the time I came to sit not knowing what I was doing, most of the time. Or like feeling like I was going to get fired. I think it was like one of those, you know, it wasn't like we were all just having a big blast party. No. It was like, when they fired the poor kid that got fired. They yeah, it got, it got tense real quick. <laughs> they, they literally walked into it, because he was... In school, they walked in him at school and they said, Hey, you like Disneyland? And he was like, Yeah. And I was like, Well, maybe you should go there tomorrow. <laughs> and he was like, Why? Aren't I working? And they're like, No, maybe you should go to Disneyland. And that was Yeah. Like, when you see someone who's fired. True story. I've never seen him since. I am still friends with him and he is currently a writer on a TV show. <laughs> well, no, yeah, because she was, she was on a huge show, and yeah. it was a huge get. My tooth didn't need an audition. <laughs> they just had me come in and do it. Yeah, Jenna, when was the last time you actually auditioned? I don't know why. What? I didn't say anything about your lips. When was the last time you actually auditioned for something? All of us really want to know. It's like seeing food and not having any uh, Well, for movies, it's sometimes different. I feel but not for TV. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've watched the TV. <laughs> 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 I'm not complaining because I I I worked my tail off. To, I mean I I would like you know put my do mail out my headshots to all the casting directors and go. And, I mean I I did everything. I did extra work. I did student films. I did everything you could possibly do and got rejected by every agent I tried to get. I'd sit in the waiting room with flowers to get attention so I could oh. spot them on their way to lunch going, hi, can I show you my reel? I would do student films to get a reel. So I had something to show agents, because, yeah. So I did I did everything short of the casting couch, but everything, like, you know, with integrity. Um, 
It's too. not that bad. You can use it. <laughs> so yeah, now I feel like I paid my dues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, we watched the movie. Do you guys want to watch? Oh, no, we have it. Is there another one? Who is the biggest jerk on set? What? Jerk, I'm done. I got, I'm just trying to keep the PG. Uh, I don't, was I, I think the biggest jerk? It, 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 it all goes me. back to the guy they fired. No, he wasn't a jerk. He was just young. Was it me? He was really sweet. I might have been the biggest jerk. I don't think we had one. I think I, I was very in, I was very in character most of the time. No, yeah, but you weren't a jerk. jerk. You, you really weren't a jerk. jerk. You liked me? Yeah, yeah I, I liked love you. Me. Did you guys like me? Yeah. I, like your I loved you. I thought, I thought you smelled, smelled really nice. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Chanel. Yeah, I don't think we did have any bad personalities. No, I, so I, I don't think, think we had any, like, <laughs> weird... People will get chastised. Just friends are in trouble. Who? A couple times. Betty. Yes. And our, our producer too. Talks, yeah, Betty. 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 Um, Betty's just. Our one of our producers. She's six talk. six. She's six. She just directed a Grace and Frankie, so I got to have her yell at me. Oh. But that's just how she is. She's this massive six six, really strong personality, amazing woman. She's huge. She's huge. I'm not exaggerating. My wife says I yeah, Straight from the end of Amazon. <laughs> no, she is. She's massive. Um, Quite a lot. And so she would yell at the directors and then they'd yell at us. Well, there were two directors. Because uh, they both And two writers. producers, too. Jeno and Ben. Jeno and Tavi. Jeno and But only one of them would come and talk to you. I think they had... Was it Harry or... or Harry, Harry would come and talk Harry to would, me. They would, you would see them kind of huddling in the corner. And then, and one then you would sit there and go, Am I getting fired? What's going on? They're talking about me. Wait, they looked at me? No, they looked at him. Nope, they looked at me. I, I didn't notice all this because I was just And then Harry would come over time. and like give notes. But they didn't give you, they didn't come over at the same time because it was too intimidating for like two people. And I think they also a lot of times were contradicted each other. So I think they had to get their story straight and then come with one like note. Because otherwise if they came together, they'd be like, no, that's not. And then they would fight in front of each other. And then they'd be like, okay, and then, then they'd huddle in the corner some more, and then they'd come back and be like, no, this is what we need to do. So it, it, it took a lot for them to get on the same page, I think. Well, but I told him during our little rehearsal process that we had, I was like, well, what you guys should do instead of coming up and giving me direction both at the same time, just one of you guys yeah. come up, and then it just comes from one person, and I can deny you, and then we can shoot. <laughs> How did that work out? Yeah. It worked out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you guys well, want to watch a silly I hope movie we, made in the 90s? And I hope you guys come see the sequel, because there will be a sequel. And maybe general. We're going to go find the part of us. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.